In early August, the Biden administration signed into law a major bipartisan bill dubbed the Chips and Science Act. It aimed to boost U.S. competitiveness with China when it came to producing semiconductors. The hope is that American companies will regain ground, regain ground as a leading factor of microchips. And it's a good bet. Semiconductors are literally in everything, everything, cars, laptops, smartphones, refrigerators, medical equipment. This fresh funding will, in theory, help bring manufacturing back to the United States, lower costs, and crucially, prevent further supply chain disruptions. Yesterday, I spoke with just the right person to tackle this topic, U.S. Trade Representative Ambassador Catherine Tai. She's the principal trade advisor, negotiator, and spokesperson on U.S. trade policy. Here's our conversation. The CHIPS Act, this is one of those things that flew under the radar because so much was going on in politics. And, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a bipartisan bill. It was an important bill. Um, what does it actually do? Because most Americans don't think of, of chips, but our costs are going up because of them. Our costs of used cars, new cars have gone up because of them. What will this bill do to the reasons why uh, semiconductors are more expensive right now than they would have been two years ago? Well, you're so right, Ali. Chips are in everything. Chips are a critical technology that power the world that we live in today. President Biden has been clear in his vision that we are going to grow the American economy from the bottom up and the middle out. And that requires substantial investments in America, in America's workers, in our producers and our industries. So the Chips and Science Act, which, as you noted, passed on a bipartisan basis, is a critical investment in a critical industry. We've seen that um, major producers have already announced um, significant investments that they are making, Intel, uh, Micron, but it's not just limited to this industry. Uh, just in the last week, we've also seen First Solar, a solar producer, Corning, a great American manufacturer, announced significant new investments also. And it's all part of President's, President Biden's vision for investing in America, Americans. Uh, that includes what we've done in the Chips and Science Act, in the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, and also in the Inflation Reduction Act. Is, it, is there a direct line between this bill and lowering costs of things that we buy that have chips in them? Or is that not really the way to think about that? Is that too sort of an immediate a line to draw? I think that's a helpful way to look at it. Um, if you uh, track our experience through this pandemic and then also most more recently through uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we see that supply chains around the world for production uh, are vulnerable. We see that in a really um, specific way for semiconductors, which has impacted people's uh, ability to buy uh, cars, um, refrigerators, um, um, phones. Uh, they impact um, uh, our high end consumption and our regular end consumption. So I think that it is helpful to look at um, uh, something like the Chips and Science Act as uh, addressing um, not just the resilience uh, for our supply chains and production, but also accessibility uh, for all of us. All right. So uh, I've been a business reporter for a long time. 20 years ago, 15 years ago, if someone said semiconductors, the answer was Taiwan. Um, we get a lot of them from Taiwan. Uh, it is a major manufacturer of semiconductors. And now we got a bit of a situation where uh, our relationship with Taiwan is being tested because China keeps sort of flying planes and putting boats into Taiwanese territory. And, and there looks like there's tension heating up on, on that side of the world. How does any of that affect this discussion? Well, um, let me just focus on the fact that uh, Taiwan has been uh, a very important and strong trading partner of the United States for a long time. Uh, Taiwan is in um, among the top 10 of our trading partners by volume. Uh, this is uh, a vibrant uh, trade relationship that we have. And at USDR, we've just announced uh, recently um, the initiation of negotiations under a, a, a U.S.-Taiwan 21st century trade initiative to deepen expa and expand um, our relationship. Um, this is a part of a broader Biden administration trade agenda to promote uh, common goals with respect to resilience, sustainability, and the creation of an inclusive prosperity with all of our partners um, and allies. Um, and this is also the reason that uh, uh, Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo and I will be hosting the trade ministers from 13 different Indo-Pacific countries in Los Angeles later this week uh, to kick off our work in the Indo-Pacific economic framework.